through the clouds today. It's a little bit warmer, the wind blowing out. We'll have game two of the Brewers and the Cubs coming up here on Comcast Sportsnet. And welcome to the booth. I'm Len Casper. We'll hear from Todd Hollinsworth, who's in for Jim Deshays today a little bit later on. We'll also get a Brewers update with their TV analyst, Bill Schroeder. But first off, let's take a look back at the highlights of game one. A rainy day here at the ballpark yesterday. 38 degrees at game time on May 16th. But the Brewers bats were hot early on. A great 12 pitch, two out at bat by Jonathan Lucroy. Off Jeff Samarja knocking in the first run of the game. That made it 1 0 Brewers right off the bat. And it was a sloppy early part of the ball game for the Cubs. Starling Castro with a throwing error, allowing Lucroy to score. So the Brewers with two runs before the Cubs came to bat. Then in the second inning, pass ball, Wellington Castile. Allows the runners to move up. Gene Segura would then come through with a solid single in the center. Two more runs in. Four nothing Milwaukee. Two of those runs unearned. Cubs on the comeback trail, however. Darwin Barney cut that deficit in half with a two run homer. His second of the year. That one off Kyle Loesch. 4 2. Third inning now. Another blast. This time Junior Lake with a line shot into the bleachers and left. 4-3 Milwaukee. There would not be another run scored the rest of the day. And Jeff Samarja did not go the six required innings for a quality start. But he really had to battle 99 pitches, six strikeouts. His ERA after that start at 1.62, even though he still doesn't have a win. Cubs bats were very quiet throughout the day after that Lake home run. Ninth inning now. Francisco Rodriguez is on. He gets Nate Scherholz to line out. To Scooter Jeanette and the Brewers hang on. Kyle Loesch with Milwaukee's 32nd quality start of the year. That leads the major leagues. And Milwaukee winning all the close ones. The Brewers are 10 and 4 in one-run games. The Cubs drop to 2 and 9 in games decided by one run. We'll get an update on the first place Brewers. They're five games up in this Central Division as we chat with Bill Schroeder from Brewers Television. Matt Garza back here at Wrigley Field facing the Cubs coming up.
weekend series, and uh, great to have with us longtime Brewers broadcaster, former big league catcher, and one of my former partners uh, on the air, Bill Schroeder. Bill, uh, welcome back to uh, Wrigley Field. You've been coming here for quite some time as uh, the ballpark celebrates its 100th birthday. There's nothing quite like it, is there? I love coming here. I mean, you know, once you get up to the booth, it's not such a bad time, right? I mean, you, know, you get up the ramps and everything, but actually today I took, uh, I took the elevator for the first time in my career. So uh, once you get up here, beautiful, you see the ivy out there. And, uh, you know, there's no place like Wrigley Field, and, and we, we like coming here. The Brewers and Cubs have built uh, quite a rivalry. It took a while to maybe get it started, but uh, it, you always see Brewers fans here and Cubs fans come to Milwaukee. Yeah, and that's what the rivalry is all about. I mean, you know, there's been some lean times for both of these organizations. Right now, the Brewers are having the better of it. But, you know, that stuff doesn't last forever. I mean, it can turn on a dime. You know, in a game like today, you know, Edwin Jackson comes out and pitches a good game. All of a sudden, then the Cubs are going to turn things around on the Brewers. But, uh, you know, it's always good to have the fans in Milwaukee and uh, the the fans from Milwaukee coming up here. I mean, uh, a lot of times you know, the security people don't like it all that much. I mean, there's a lot of bit, a lot of you know, a few brawls that uh, we get a chance to see. But uh, you know, this is uh, this is a rivalry that makes sense. You know, there's some rivalries in baseball that just don't work, but this is a good one. Why are the Brewers in first place? Basically, they've been uh, leading this division every day, but I think four so far this year. Pitching. I mean, it's simple as that. I mean, they're not scoring a lot of runs, but nobody is really. I mean, you look at the Brewers. They uh, they score enough to win. Uh, they're 12 games over 500, in large part because of their starting rotation. Their bullpen has been terrific, and uh, you know the addition of your guy uh, Matt Garza has helped these guys. I mean, I think that uh, you know he's he's an aggressive type of guy. He's off to a rough start, um, but the rotation has been good. They're eating up innings, keeping the bullpen fresh, and um, you know pitching and defense. You know they're up amongst league leaders in defense, not giving extra outs, and you know a lot of the guys out of the lineup. You know Braun's been out. Ramirez is on the DL. You know, Carlos Gomez serving a suspension. He's got a bad back, so he is not in the lineup again today. So, uh, you know, with that, a lot of the uh, the bench players have been uh, performing pretty well and scoring just enough to win games. All right, last question quickly. If the team needs to add a piece, what area do you think it'll be, and do you think the Brewers would do that down the road? I think that they will. I mean, if they continue to, to play well and continue this nice stretch, you know, May has never been a kind month to the Milwaukee Brewers. I mean, you know, back in 87, you know, we won the first 12 games. Uh, we were 13 and 0, actually, and lost 12 in a row. Last year, 6 and 22 in May. So right now they're around 500 in the month of May. I think that they would like to uh, uh, bolster. I think yeah, maybe get another power bat in the lineup. I'm not sure. You know, maybe an extra outfielder, an infielder. But I think once you get to the All Star break, Mark Ananasio is not afraid to make a move. Bill, always a pleasure to see you. Nice job. Great tie. Yeah, nice tie. I thought I could take it off here, but the <laughs> folks from Fox are get a little upset with me. But uh, always great. To see you, pal. All right, that's Bill Schroeder. Great pitching matchup today. Matt Garza against his former team. Edwin Jackson for the Cubs coming up.
Cubs continue to celebrate Wrigley Field's 100th birthday and the famous marquee at Clark and Addison going retro on this homestand as we celebrate the 1930s and we're set for Cubs baseball on Comcast Sportsnet. The Cubs welcome in the first place Milwaukee Brewers. Hi again, everyone. Alongside Todd Hollinsworth, who's in for Jim Deshays, I'm Len Casper. Good pitching matchup. We'll get into that here in a second. Matt Garza and Edwin Jackson. But, Todd, the uh, Brewers winning yesterday without Aramis Ramirez on the DL. Carlos Gomez suspended. He's still out day-to-day -day with a back issue. But they get Ryan Braun back today. Yeah, big bat in the middle of their lineup. Great numbers against the Cubs. 12-game hitting streak. He's got that going. Yeah, the Brewers aren't doing things wrong. They're doing things very right. You saw it early yesterday, taking advantage of the Cubs' miscues. It really, I thought, tells the story of where both these organizations are. Ryan Braun, by the way, just recently came off the DL, uh, an oblique injury, so they kept him out yesterday due to precautionary measures, but he is in the lineup hitting third today. Matt Garza is back at Wrigley Field. He beat the Cubs in April, and I guess his manager might be a little concerned about the butterflies today. <laughs> well, I think they're very real. He's at Wrigley Field now. He struggled on the road, 836 ERA on the road this season, and you factor in emotion, his personality. How is it going to be here at Wrigley Field today? So the Brewers have been winning all the close games. The Cubs have been in a ton of games. They just keep coming up a little bit short. 4-3 Milwaukee, the final yesterday. Again, Edwin Jackson goes for the home team. And let's send it down to the field, our national anthem. Here's John Vincent. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please rise and kindly remove your caps. Presenting the colors to honor the nation on Armed Forces Day is the Navy Color Guard from the Captain James A. Lovell Federal Health Care Center. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please remain standing and join John Vincent as he honors America with our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched was so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glow the bombs bursting in a gave proof through the John Vincent getting a set for Cubs baseball. The Brewers and the Cubs. Nice day here at the ballpark, and we'll have all the action coming up next.
Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois. Through it all. AT&T U-verse. AT&T U-verse TV. Check availability at 1-800-PICK-ATT. Rethink possible. Ford. Check out America's freshest lineup at your local Ford store or at localfordstores.com. And by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. And we want to welcome those watching on the Armed Forces Network around the globe. Great to have you with us today for Cubs baseball from beautiful Wrigley Field. What a night last night for the pitchers around baseball. Drew Hutchison was better than you, Darvish. Toronto shut out the uh, Rangers in Arlington, and it was only the second time that at least six road shutouts were dealt on the same day. You have to go back to 1972, June 4th of that year, when there were seven. So we have gotten back to the era of the pitcher, it seems. <laughs> no doubt about it, Len. Uh... A lot of parody in baseball this year, and uh, you've seen some great pitching despite all the Tommy John conversation. A lot of these injuries, pitching still rules the day. Max Scherzer with a one nothing shutout over John Lester at Fenway Park. Jeff Samar just still can't buy a win. Nine starts in all, and has the second best ERA in the majors behind only. Johnny Cueto his next outing will come against the Yankees to wrap up this homestand and the Cubs will hit the road again 10 games in 11 days San Diego San Francisco and Milwaukee so the Cubs take the field behind veteran right hander Edwin Jackson let's get the Brewers Southwest Starting lineup some changes late as Gomez was scratched eligible today, but still has lower back tightness So Elian Herrera will be the leadoff man. He's in left scooter Jeanette at second. There's Braun back in the lineup Luke Croy the catcher Mark Reynolds at first Gene Segura had a big day yesterday Logan Schaefer in for Gomez Bianchi over at third and Matt Garza the pitcher hits ninth Oh, defensively for the Cubs. Coughlin's going to get the start in left field. Bonifacio in center. Sheerholtz, he's your right fielder today. Around the infield, Old Castro, Barney, Rizzo, Wellington, Castillo is going to be behind the plate. Edwin Jackson, he's your Lexus starting pitcher. Been a lot better as of late. He got off to a slow start. First three starts. He had an ERA of 6.19, but in his last five, 3.73. And Todd, he's kept the ball in the ballpark this year, which yeah. is good to see. Absolutely key to his starts. Uh, fastball command as uh, all your starting pitching. I mean, they typically talk about it that way. Fastball command, I think it's real important for Edwin Jackson. He's a two-pitch guy. I mean, occasionally you're going to see the curveball and mm, sometimes the changeup, but he's a fastball slider guy. And for me, always being able to double up to a side of the plate has made sense for me and Edwin Jackson. If he can go low and away with the fastball, the ability to go there with the slider and get the swing and the miss. So I think that's going to be key today against, uh, well, sometimes aggressive Brewer team. Crew chief is Brian Gorman, and in his 23rd season in the big leagues, he will call balls and strikes. David Rackley at first, Pat Hoberg at second, Bill Welke over at third. Time for lunch and a ball game. Yeah. The key other also for Edwin is get early outs and in innings because he really slows the pace down when there are base runners. We know Garza is very deliberate as well. And we've talked before about a defensive rhythm. It's nice to have when a guy's working quickly, which he does a lot better with nobody on base. Right. Last two starts, 13 innings, 12 hits, two walks. Really stands out, Len. He's uh, he's aggressive, throwing strikes, and that's really key. I agree. <laughs> it slows the pace of the game down when he gets some traffic out there. So the switch hitting Herrera. Who was in right yesterday's and left today. Batting left-handed against the righty Jackson. And here we go and ball one outside. 
to get us started. Thirty eight at game time yesterday. We're in the mid fifties today. A noticeable difference especially with a slight breeze out of the west instead of the east. Yes much much better hitting conditions today. Uh, well pitchers themselves. <laughs> it has been a cold year so far. That's a strike. Out in the burbs yesterday Len we had snow. Oh yeah I drove through it. On the Edens. And around 930. And it did not get much warmer. Alt plays in at third on the grass and the 2 1 pitch is swung on and missed 2 and 2. Jackson faced the Brewers five times last year one win four losses. Four in six lifetime. And a fastball. And he swung right through it for the first out. Great to see right there from Edwin Jackson able to go there 2 1 and 2 2. That's kind of what I was talking about doubling up in spots. You saw it right there finds the low corner away able to go there again to get the strikeout. We'll bring up Scooter Jeanette. 0 for 4 with a walk in the opener. Alt still in at third and ball one. Whatever wind there was here a couple of minutes ago has pretty much died. Again, overcast, occasional sun. Both teams able to take batting practice today. That's progress. One and one. <laughs> well, I think the temperatures around here are supposed to warm up here next week. The Cubs hitters would love to see that. Uh, in batting practice and certainly during the game warmer temperatures as the ball will start to fly just a little bit more. Way out in front of that that ball actually bounced in front of home plate. And Jeanette swung at it one and two. Rare curveball as you mentioned from Jackson. No, it wasn't a good one. He got the desired result. Fastball fouled off. Well, that's what Edmund Jackson can do. You watch him in so many of his starts. He's got a good fastball. He's got the ability to keep it down in the zone and even get to the swing and misses. But if he, if he can get there with his secondary pitches, he will get those swings and misses because he's going to fool the hitters and, and they're trying to be aggressive. Braun on deck, just underway. Swing and a miss. Two batters, two strikeouts. Right fielder, number eight, Brian Braun. Generally the reaction he's getting on the road he got a standing ovation in Milwaukee coming off the suspension last year he's hearing it from the road fans and he takes a strike and mentioned him in the open he has been a cub killer 25 hits over his last dozen games against the Cubs. Well Len he's been able to keep it together I guess uh, you know you talk about the process the fan reaction right there Ryan Braun has been able to zone a lot of that stuff out and continue to perform I think that's the key for the Brewers yeah in Milwaukee they react differently to Ryan Braun but on the road he's getting that kind of reaction but it's not it hasn't affected his game yet. Shit over 380 here at Wrigley. Castro on a 13 game streak against the Cubs. Ball was hit on the button by Braun. And it keeps the inning alive for the catcher Lucroy. Stays on that fastball, drives it right back through the middle. Hey. 
It's in the strained oblique. And he was activated Tuesday, played in that Pittsburgh series, and then sat out yesterday. Now Lucroy off to another good start. A lot of Jackson's problems have come early. He's allowed 24 earned runs. 16 of those have come in the first or second inning. Well, this is kind of key. The Brewers trying to get him in the stretch. The type of team that will bunt, they will hit and run, they'll double steal, they'll do different things to kind of create some action. Yeah, you've got two outs here, but you've got a guy at the plate who can handle the bat. We'll see what happens. Brewers got off to a 20 and 7 start. They then lost 7 of 9, but they've recovered to win 5 of their last 6. They have the best overall and road record in the National League. That missed. A little high, one ball, no strikes. Yes, that road record, 13 and 5. I mean, this is a team that had 88 losses last year, and you say, what's different? One thing that stands out to me is this Brewers club doesn't beat themselves. And you saw a little bit of this yesterday. I feel like they take advantage of teams. They don't put them in. You know, they're not slugging as many home runs as we've seen them do in the past. They've had some guys with injuries. Aramis Ramirez has been out of there. Carlos Gomez. Braun's now just getting back. They don't beat themselves making mistakes defensively or on the base pass. Well, they've pitched very well. One ball one strike on Lucroy. Braun singling with two outs here in the first inning. But a very interesting piece Len uh, Ron Renicky was talking about Matt Garza's impact in the clubhouse. Not statistically, not length of start, not really going in there, just his energy, what he brings to this team. He's a pretty quiet bench. Garza brings it in. He's he's lively. Different, though. <laughs> Use the word different. There's a base hit, so two strikeouts followed by two singles. And it'll bring up Mark Reynolds. He's just a good player, isn't he? Oh, he's a very good player. I think he's uh, in a lot of circles underrated. I think he's a huge reason why this Brewers team has done so well this year and is off to a great start. Not only his bat in the middle of the lineup, but what he's done with the staff. Some of the newcomers that have come on board, I think of Will Smith down in the bullpen. He's got a .44 ERA. Everybody kind of coming together, but he's got to be the glue. Now Reynolds has long been... A big time power threat. He will swing and miss a fair amount. Played third yesterday. He's at first today. And now Castillo will head out and talk it over with Jackson. Got to get their signs together with a runner at second base for the first time today. Rick Renteria feeling better after dealing with some bronchitis, but he generally has his voice back. Hard to recover in the middle of a season, especially when you, you're the manager and you're paid to talk a lot to players and the media and the like, but he's been doing a lot of it. All these young players. First and second for Reynolds. Here's the pitch. It's a strike. So Castillo now sliding toward the outer edge and the sliders low. It's going to be a big pitch for Edwin Jackson today if he can get that up. A lot of right handers in the lineup today for the Brewers. 
really another one of those things that stood out for the Brew Crew talking about their success this year. <laughs> How right handed they are. Reynolds sharing time at first with Lyle Overbay. Laid off that slider. It's two and one. We're making him work. Already 19 pitches. Into his motion, swing and a miss. Third time's a charm, third time. Three straight sliders to the low corner. Able to get that one, even the count of two and two. Big pitch right there. And he's been hammering down on that corner trying to get there, knowing he would get that swing. Reynolds wants to swing the bat. He finally got it there, even the count. Sticks with the slider again, still two and two. Gene Segura is on deck. Well, he's working against Reynolds power. You saw that board uh, the home runs that Reynolds has hit throughout his career right there. Well he's trying to stay away from it. It is still pretty chilly out here. You don't want to make a mistake. You got some traffic out there early in the ball game. Stick with that slider low and away. Another 2-2 two -two called strike three. Reynolds started to think he was going to get another slider. He got a fastball instead. And Jackson with three punch outs in the first. The Brewers strand two and the Cubs are coming up. At Vinny's Beverage Depot will donate $100 to JDRM. Cup Southwest starting lineup that leadoff man is Emilio Bonifacio. Chris Coglin gets a start in left today. Rizzo, Castro, Sherholtz, and Castillo in the middle. Mike Alt kind of uh, lurking down there in the seventh spot with eight home runs leading the club. Barney homered yesterday, and Edwin Jackson, the pitcher, hits nine. Now well, here's your Milwaukee Brewers on defense. Herrera is going to be in left. Schaefer Braun around the outfield. Bianchi, Segura, Jeanette Reynolds will be your infield. Jonathan Lucroy does the catching. Matt Garza is on the mound. Back here at Wrigley Field, you see an ERA of almost five. That will go down, no doubt, as the season moves along. Got a four year contract. After finishing last year with the Texas Rangers, and he'll face a guy who he was traded for in the lineup today, Mike Olt. 
Well, Matt struggled on the road as well. Three road starts, 8-3-6 ERA, uh, nine walks, 10 strikeouts, 14 hits. Or excuse me, 14 innings, pitched 21 hits. He's really struggled on the road, whip of two. So we'll see if the Cubs can get something going against him early today. All of his previous starts at Wrigley Field came as a Cub, and he had a very good 2.70 ERA. Finished his Cub career with a bang. He went 5 and 0 with a 124 over his final six starts before he was dealt to Texas. There's a bunt, and it'll be a hit. So they make Garza field his position on the very first pitch of the opening inning, something they did not do enough of in Milwaukee. Well, Emilio Bonifacio does a nice job as a bunter in that position right there. Goes up on the bat, catches it, catches the baseball, able to drop it. That's how you deaden it, able to drop it down the third baseline. That's no man's land right there. That's going to be a base hit every time. There were a couple of balls uh, on April 25th that Garza thought about fielding, but the corner guys took them instead, but really no choice there but just to pick it up and put it in his pocket. And as Chris Coglin will bat with a runner on. And he tries to bunt and hits it foul. This may be a bunting clinic today, Todd. <laughs> well, Len, you know why. We've watched Matt Garza through the years have some issues with fielding bunts and throwing balls to bases. And I was wondering, even in that first start, if he was going to get challenged enough and why the Cubs weren't you know, maybe trying that just a little bit more. Coglin tries to do it himself, even with the good numbers. He's getting the start today because he's four for five against Garza with some big power numbers. The Yankee way in at third. Coglin squares again, and <laughs> Garza will underhand it to first, never even looked at second. A good job by Coglin on the sacrifice. I'm not sure what it is. He's not the only guy who throws a ball for a living, but for whatever reason, Matt has always struggled throwing the bases. Well, Len, I, I'll be honest. Uh, I, I had a bit of this problem even as an outfielder in warm-ups. Uh, used to, Derek Lee and I, were, we were kind of throwing partners. We'd be out in left field getting loose for the game, and I could not throw short. For me, it was always about I had to throw long first, and short was very uncomfortable uncomfortable for me I trying to lob the ball to him from only 10 feet away I think pitchers go through this they've got their adrenaline pumping they're they're in the game they're executing pitches they're throwing hard and then you realize you've got to throw a half throw to your first baseman who is 25 30 feet away Rizzo takes a rare slow curve from Garza for a strike so Bianchi has to kind of Honor that base runner Bonifacio by playing close, somewhat close to third as they shift against Rizzo. And pop foul out of play. Anthony and his family foundation hosting the second cookoff for cancer event. At Rebel downtown last night and the early returns raised about one hundred fifty thousand dollars for charity. And if you were there and contributed nice going gang great event. Two strikes on him. Now one and two. Now this is where Matt Garza is really going to be tested. Uh, you talked about Edwin Jackson and some of the early inning trouble that he's had this year. Matt Garza, very similar. 26 earned runs on the season. 16 of those earned runs have come in the first three innings of a ball game. Ground ball pulled to Jeanette. Short throw to get the out. Bonifacio at third, but there are two outs now. And it'll bring up Starlin Castro. It's early, but his OPS over 800 would be a new career high. And he has settled in nicely. 
in the cleanup spot. Yes, he's enjoying it, no doubt. 19 games, 321, four homers, 12 RBIs in the cleanup spot. Garza stays in the stretch with a runner at third. Low ball one. Did you like facing pitchers who were former teammates of yours? Did you feel like you had the advantage early or the pitcher? Oh, I felt like I did, absolutely. Uh, I mean, you gain just as much knowledge playing behind them. Their body rhythm, their time, their tempo. Talking about Edwin Jackson slows the game down with runners on base. There's a pace to the game. There's a pace to your game. And hitters are always trying to figure that out about the mound. And the guys on the bump. You can watch video all you want. But until you get in the box and start to face these guys time and time again, I think you can cut through a lot of that by going up against some of your former teammates, even if they've got elite stuff. There's just a natural ability to kind of relax in that situation. I know who you are. I played against you. For me, I had more trouble going up against the Greg Maddoxes for the first time and the Randy Johnsons and intimidated and, you know, maybe buying into the name on the back of the jersey. Hitters count here for Castro on the pitch. Drilled out in the deep right center. And it will get off the wall. Just missed a home run. As it is, it'll be an RBI double. That ball may have hit the bottom of the basket. It looked like he missed a home run by about a foot or two. Great piece of hitting by Starling Castro. 2 0 count, stays on the fastball, gets it up, drives it up, out to right center oh, field. Yeah. Just missed. Oh, hit the basket. That is very rare. This is my 10th year here. I've maybe seen. One or two line drives hit the bottom of the basket. Oh, so close. But as it is, it's one nothing. We'll take it. Here's Nate Sherholtz. Ball one. Look at that. I mean, oh, essentially right, right at that yellow rope. Well, and you don't realize how hard it is, Len. I mean, it will, for, the, for the fans at home, how hard it is to hit that basket. It's at an angle. It's, a, it's actually pointing towards home plate, out towards the field right there. So it's not even as you see it from standing on the field, it looks like it's, I don't know, five or six feet. But the angle that it's on, it makes it even tougher. Garza behind another Cub batter, 2 0 on Sherholtz, and high three balls, no strikes. And that's some of that rhythm we've talked about both guys today. Edwin Jackson, Matt Garza, key to their outings in a lot of ways. Finding the secondary stuff. We watched Matt early this inning try to get to it. Now he's struggling with his fastball command against Nate Sherholtz. Ball four, he walked him. Steele trying to get out of a slump, just five for his last 42. But facing a guy he used to catch, and that one uh, way inside almost hit him. Now Wellington was in a good spot about two weeks ago, and I think as the, he got moved up in the lineup just a little bit, and we talk about the learning curve, and, and, and as we watch Wellington Castillo and the younger players develop here at the level, he had gotten pushed up in the lineup just a little bit, and some of the struggles came along with it. And now you find him in the six hole here today. That'll be a fair ball. Castro will score easily. Gary Jones is going to send Sir Holtz as well, and it's a two-run double. Well, those 
Cubs bats are certainly ready today. Matt Garza. Three two out runs. And a milestone for Starlin. There it is right out over the plate. Let me tell you something folks 1 0 pitches uh, off speed pitches out over the plate doesn't matter with the count. you think yeah this is a fastball that's what I got to be hitting right here when you get a cookie like that ooh, make them pay well if Castillo does it he's aggressive gets it down into the left field corner pick up a couple runs. An inning still alive for Mike Alt and he swung at a slider a change up in the dirt one strike on him. He's got a pretty good haul for Matt Garza. Justin Grimm, Neil Ramirez, Mike Alt, all here at the big league level. C.J. Edwards, one of the Cubs' top pitching prospects in the minor leagues. Here's the 0-1. It's a strike, 0-2. It has shifted a little bit. And Alt strikes out, but a big first inning for the Cubs against their former teammate. It's three nothing Cubs after one. This homestand, the Cubs celebrate with music, food, and giveaways reminiscent of the 1930s. For more information about the 30 celebration, visit WrigleyField100.com. The Brewers are back for one more, and the Yankees match up against the Cubs on Tuesday night and Wednesday afternoon. Tickets are still available at Cubs.com. Three run first inning in support of Edwin Jackson, who faces Gene Segura here in the second. Ball one low. Three hits yesterday, two knocked in for the Brewers' shortstop. That's a strike. Off to a little slower start this year. You remember that extraordinary start that he had to last season, where he caught the certainly the National League Central and most of the National League by storm. Faded a little bit late, maybe got tired in September. As he pops it up. Castillo will make the catch for the out. Well, 
as well. He waited to discard his mask until he knew exactly where the ball was going to be. Absolutely, Len. That's exactly what you want to do in that situation. Uh, if you throw it early, then you find yourself uh, having to navigate the waters as uh, the wind takes control of some of the pop ups around here. Second start of the series for Schaefer. As Gomez was scratched with continuing back tightness. It's a big inning for Edwin Jackson. We talk about this all the time. You sense it in the dugout, you talk about it. Shut down innings after your team erupts. Three, two out, in, two runs in the first. Get back out there. Edwin Jackson throwing strikes. Put a goose egg up there. Put a zero on the board and get the boys back in the dugout. News today, Tony LaRussa now running the baseball operations for the Arizona Diamondbacks. They hired him today as their chief baseball officer. He'll report to their team president, Derek Hall. And the GM, Kevin Towers, will report to Tony. Well, it's been a frustrating year for those Diamondbacks. We saw them in April. A lot of expectation down in the desert for this team to be certainly better than what they've been this year. Lost their ace Corbin early Tommy John surgery but hard to put that all on just losing your ace with uh, some of the issues they've had down there. Looking at Tony La Russa to bring it together and get this thing moving in the right direction. And they got shut out by the Dodgers last night. They're one and eight versus L.A. and 16 and 28 overall is. Schaefer takes the one out walk. Here's Jeff Bianchi making his ninth start of the year. Ramos Ramirez on the DL with a strained hamstring. Strike on the inside. One other game underway. Atlanta with a one nothing lead at St. Louis as they play the third inning at Bush Stadium. The Cardinals winning last night. It's Aaron Harang and Shelby Miller pitching matchup in that one. Cardinals have now won three in a row. A lot of buzz around the Cardinals is how they're going to get things right this season. They've had their own issues in St. Louis, scoring some runs, bullpen issues down there as well. So they're five back of Milwaukee starting play today. Alan Craig with three hits last night in a 5 2 win. Strike two. One and two. Big crowd here today. A nice day to be here. The uh, sweatshirt weather. But we'll take it after what we endured yesterday. <laughs> we, it was not sweatshirt weather. We, it was sweatshirt times three we weather. Lo we lowered our expectations of our, our springtime weather around here. <laughs> One two pitch. There goes the bat on strike three. Wow. Ended up about 12 rows back. Looks like everybody's all right. Yeah, maybe it is a little colder down there than we think. <laughs> they got to get him some grip stick on that bat. Ooh, good toss. 
Already four strikeouts for Jackson. Oh. I'll tell you as a hitter that's the worst feeling you know that once it leaves your hands you've got no you no longer have control and you only can hope that the people where your pet is going are paying attention. Here's Garza one hit a double 17 tries this year. And a strike. Matt's wearing one of those uh, those mouth guards, those mm. mouthpieces. Yeah, that's. Uh, I don't think he wore that last year. Is that kind of the, the balance thing? I uh, I am not, I'm not sure. Yeah, I've heard about those. It's certainly new to the game. A few more guys wearing them. Actually, a, a lot of guys are wearing them nowadays. One and two. I don't want to feel all that old at age 41, but <laughs> bubble gum, sunflower seeds. <laughs> that was about it. Now we've got mouthpieces. First two outs, second inning, and a one two, and he got him to end it. Five K's among the six outs recorded by Jackson to start the ball game. Nothing as we head to the bottom of the second. Mark Garza back on the bump and Wellington Castillo and company getting after their former teammate early. We've been discussing all game long as to who has the advantage in this matchup. And here's what manager Rick Renteria had to say on that topic. Once you step between the lines, it doesn't matter. Uh, I think your approach has to be the reality is they're trying to beat you and you got to try and beat him in terms of like knowing how knowing the tendencies knowing that well I think again those are those are more the tendencies that that they'll see believe it or not they'll still have to go review mm -hmm. the, the books because mm -hmm. sometimes people say why well, yeah this guy doesn't do this or do that and then when you go look at it you go well, where did you get your information why well, played with him well you weren't very accurate <laughs> you know sometimes even playing with people doesn't give you the, the you know the the correct information you actually have to go back and decipher sometimes players you ask a player you know where do you like to pitch oh I like to I like to pitch out and over okay and then you go back and look at his thing and he, everything in is what he crushes and everything away he's, he's having problems with so everybody's different 
So I'm sure Matt Garza thinks he knows these guys pretty well, especially this guy at the plate now, Darwin Barney. But, Todd, you were saying you felt like the offense has the advantage. In this specific situation, though, for Matt Garza, what do you think? Well, I think he definitely has. Uh, the hitters have the advantage because, to me, it's the comfort level that you have as a hitter that you're seeking all along. And when you're going up against the guy you know, you've seen him do it time and time again. I just think that's an advantage. It doesn't guarantee results. But in my mind, it was how long is it going to take me to get comfortable? And <laughs> I go up against a former teammate. I always seemed like I, I, I could get there quicker. Now, having said that, Todd Hollinsworth, you hit over 300 against Greg Maddox. <laughs> it took me a while. So as bad as it felt, <laughs> You did very well. Here's a 1 0 to Darwin Barney. And actually, uh, what Ricky said is absolutely right. I, I've talked to a million guys who say, you know, whether it's in confidence, I feel very comfortable against this guy, mm -hmm. or I feel uncomfortable against that guy. And then you go look at the results, and they don't match how a guy feels at all. Well, that's exactly what he's saying. You're right. Yeah, it, it, it's it's how hitters feel and, and, and some, I mean, it's the unspoken language Len it I mean, sometimes fans have a hard time understanding. It's you know what statistics can't prove to you. It's it, it's what players will tell you. I, I may not have the results but and you may not know this but I've gone 0 for 4 against that guy but I lined out three times. Right. One and two as Garza tries to settle in after Giving up three runs in the first. Barney homered yesterday. He's heating up at the plate and he needed to. Seven for his last 19. Well, true to form, and he's been getting more starts as well, and that's come along with him hitting. Ricky Renneray has talked about that uh, a lot this year. Guys earning their playing time, being out there on the field as Darwin has heated up. More starts have come his way. Sharply hit on the ground. Little bobble by Bianchi. I think if he grabs it after that first little bobble, he has him. But then he couldn't pick it up. It'll be an error on him to start the inning. Well, they call it the hot corner for a reason. The room for error is not the same, right? One little hiccup there. Catches it off the heel of the glove as he's coming up. Ball hits the ground. He runs out of time. Darwin Barney saved the first. E5. And that sets up another bunting opportunity here for the Cubs. <laughs> put down two in the first. One was a hit, the other a sacrifice. And Garza fielded both. Jackson showed bunt, pulled the bat back, and then took a strike. Well, that's that's the one thing I, I think we've seen the Cubs do too often. JD and I have harped on this: the idea of if you're going to bunt. And I pulled the bat back. I don't know if it, it was designed take or swing, but now all of a sudden it's a lot tougher to get it oh, down. Don't give pitches away when you're bunting. Bunting is not easy. I care who you are. Yeah, that's not something I, I I didn't have to do it a lot in my career, Len, but when I was asked to get a sacrifice bunt down, I mean, first good fastball around the plate, wanted a good effort, didn't want to be uh, nitpicking trying to well I'm gonna get him to throw me one right down the middle of the plate so I can drop down the perfect bun if you get that pitch you get a fastball anywhere near the white get in there get that thing down it's not easy to bunt 94 miles an hour much less a slider in the dirt swings away as Bianchi's about 50 feet from home plate <laughs> hard to skip two beats yes, it did one and two I don't mind the thought process behind this. You know, some of this is the strategy, the chess match going on with Matt Garza and understanding that he's had a hard time fielding his position. Not conceding the bunt right here. And he couldn't pull it back in time. They appealed down at first, and David Brackley made the call. Well, and that's what you're talking about right there, down to one last strike. Try to bunt at it. Kept it out there just a little bit too long. You can see, uh, yep, he went at it and then tried to pull it back, maybe get one past the first base umpire, but he wasn't falling for it. Second strikeout for Garza. And Bianchi will stay right where he is with Bonifacio digging in. A bunch single to lead off the bottom of the first.
Ball one. Once again, Todd in for Jim Deshays, who is attending his daughter's law school graduation in Champaign. Busy day, pregame, postgame, game for you today. <laughs> lots of work, lots, lots of work. The 1 0 yank foul past Eric Hinsky at first. It's all good. Good matchup today. I was excited to see Matt Garza back uh, here at Wrigley Field. The Ryan Braun angle certainly interested me just a little bit to see how the fan reaction was going to be there. Well, we've had it all so far here in the early going. Striking early against Matt Garza. Barney the runner at first. And Garza steps off. Blocked by Lucroy, two and one. And a real interesting spot where you might want to put a runner in motion, though. Emilio Bonifacio uses the whole field so well with the third baseman in right there. You kind of have a short lane between third and short on the right side of the field. Again, you've got Darwin Barning being held on at first, so you got two lanes to pick pick from for Emilio Bonifacio right now. So I'm thinking he may just hold one more pitch. There goes Barney. And that ball's bounced to Jeanette. And we'll get the out at first. Yeah, they put him in motion. Here comes Coglin with Barney in scoring position and two outs. Fourth start for Coglin since coming up from AAA earlier this month. Still looking for his first RBI. He's put together some good at bats. I know his batting average doesn't show you that right now. A couple good lengthy at bats on the road trip, hit a couple balls hard. Hopefully, he'll get some good results for himself today. Former rookie of the year. It was 09 with the Marlins. Had some knee problems since. Hit hard but foul. Well, this is his first fresh start. Uh, you know, hopefully, he can earn himself some more playing time here as he tries to reestablish himself at the big league level. Good hands. Quick hands, good instincts in the outfield. Good opportunity here with the Cubs. Curve strike one and two. Getting set up by an error to start it. The Yankee over at third allowed Barney to reach. He's now at second with two outs. Playing him to pull on the infield, shading him to left in the outfield. Didn't mean to, and he rolled it foul up along third. Marco Estrada and Travis Wood tomorrow, and then the Cubs have an off day Monday before the Yanks come in Tuesday night.
Brewers will head for warmer, warmer climbs. They'll be in Atlanta and Miami. Last two legs of their long road trip. Still one and two. Good battle going on right now between Chris Coughlin and Matt Garza. He's tried to go away off speed, fastball away. Now he came back in right there. Chris able to foul it off, keep himself alive in the count. Remember, Matt got off to a late start. In his final year as a Cub last year, sprained lat. Didn't make his season debut until right around this time in May. He made reference to that great finish. Uh, I know that uh, there's been certainly a lot of chatter about uh, the package that we were able to get back from Matt Garza. And I keep thinking about the timing of that. Matt was just pitching so well, certainly a big name in. In baseball and around baseball with that fantastic finish that he had in a Cubs uniform. Inside it's full with Rizzo on deck three and two. To Jeanette to end it. An error, no runs, one left. We go to the third. Three nothing Cubs. Today is Kid Sundays in Wrigley Field. Tomorrow at 1.20 p.m., the Cubs battle the Brewers. First 5,000 kids, 13 and under, will receive a Cubs Viewmaster, which is the third of 10's Cubs retro toy giveaways. At the conclusion of the game, the first 1,000 kids, 13 and younger, will have the opportunity to run the bases. For more information or to purchase tickets, visit Cubs.com. Enjoying an afternoon at the ball yard. Selfie time. <laughs> Cubs leading three nothing. Top of the order. Second time through. Jackson with five strikeouts against the first nine batters of the ball game. And the pitch to Herrera, a swing and a miss. This is the new Edwin Jackson that we've seen over the last two starts really using that slider able to use the slider to get swing and misses you see it right there at the beginning of an inning you say what what am I playing off of right there well you're playing off your fastball aggressiveness the prior innings 
You got a young hitter coming up to the box. You throw a get me over slider in the dirt, and you get a swing and a miss. A slap bunt. Jackson got it. Nice play. Edwin has had occasional issues throwing to bases as well, but he didn't have time to think about it, which is probably good. <laughs> I think you're right. Would have been the same way if I had too much time to think about it. <laughs> no doubt I would have air well, it. He fired a fastball to Rizzo. <laughs> well, that's just it. Yeah. That, that, is, that is just it. Sometimes you get yourself in a position where you just want to react and make the play. It's when you have time to think about it and your mechanics, and so you know you're throwing one down the line. Mm. Jeanette struck out his first time 0 for 5 in the series with a walk. He's taken over a majority of the playing time at second for Ricky Weeks. Who has been hot as of late but has not started in this series. Probably will tomorrow against the lefty Travis Wood. He's been unwilling to learn the outfield as well. Ricky Weeks been offered the opportunity to go out there and, and, and get some at bats if he would learn a corner outfield spot. Uh, he's been very reluctant to do that. 2 and 0. Oh. Popped him up. Castro with his glasses on makes a catch. A really bright sky all of a sudden. Well, those are the challenges of Wrigley Field. You see it quite a bit. The clouds coming in off the lake. It lets the sun through sometimes and it'll get shady for a while. Right there, Starling Castro had to deal with a bright, bright sky. This is what he will deal with. Didn't bother him in his first at bat at two out single. No, it didn't. Inside ball one. A third baseman originally that moved to left, and now this year moving to right. Two and zero. Oh. Well, it's a big year for Ryan Braun. He not only has to prove to the Brewer fans, but baseball fans around the country who he is. A lot of question whether. He would be near the numbers that he's put up through the early parts of his career and all this being connected back to PED use. I think fans are, are curious to see what kind of player and what kind of year he puts out there. Well, I'm not surprised he's been as good as he's been. Basically, what he's doing right now is what he's done in his career. Yeah. Well, neither am I. I really did expect him to be close to or at the numbers that he put up throughout his career. Actually, Todd, I, I would say the, the bigger question. I think going into the year was the thumb that bothered him last year as mm -hmm. opposed to people booing him on the road. No, and even the thumb that he's dealing with again this year. Yeah. Two balls, two strikes. Here it is. Found back right over the head of Lucroy, the on deck hitter. I mean that's just it. PED conversation for so many of us is just really so confusing. You look at Ryan Braun now; he looks no different than the Ryan Braun you've watched over the last few seasons. Same batting stance, same size physically, same approach, uses the whole field. I've said all along, and I, I really believe it's the the psychological element of PED use that is, you know, put players in position to think that I need this or I got to try that. Or the advantage that they think they have. Now his case a little different from some other guys. In that the uh, reports of a possible suspension and the collection of the sample he got. Off scot free as they say. Yep. But he did serve his uh, penalty at the end of last year and he's back now. And he just struck out against Jackson three nothing Cubs in the third.
tune in to come. Conference final Blackhawks post game live tomorrow after the Kings and the Hawks. Pat and Steve will have all the coverage. Time for you to tweet your photo using hashtag Northside Fan Photo for a chance to have it appear later in today's broadcast. Brought to you by AT&T. Cubs trying to add on here in the third inning, leading three nothing. Three, four, and five against Matt Garza. And again, the uh, Brewers no doubt leaving their third baseman where he is because of Garza on the mound and the fact that Rizzo laid down two bunt hits against the Cardinals two days ago. Otherwise, he'd be pulled way over toward the shortstop. Well, there's been a lot of debate about that throughout baseball as to why more hitters aren't taking advantage of the overshifting. I've said for, for a long time, why in the world, if they're going to give you leading off an inning, a base hit down the third baseline, why wouldn't you take it? It's the same thing as a line drive base hit to center field to right field or wherever they're giving it to you take it I mean, we see it uh, on the south side of town Adam Dunn uh, you know an off lock gets that overshift. There's nobody over there that's going to throw him out even with a you know a hard bunt to the left side. The change up from Garza two and one. Really good job, especially against lefties spreading the ball around. 2 1 pitch, muscled into right. Like he got in on his hands a little bit, and Braun will make the grab for the out. Send it down to Kelly Crow. Well, guys, Starling Castro, of course, got the Cubs going in the first inning with that two out RBI double, and he's really been on a tear as of late, hitting almost 300 against righties this season. I asked him the other day if he's changed anything maybe tweaked anything in his approach or his swing and he did mention that when he steps into his swing he has a tendency after looking at film with coach Miller he says to sort of open his hips and kind of plant his left foot out wide and he's trying to really close that stance up so Todd I thought maybe you could explain how that's helped him here and being so good and what he's done lately. Well, the key to hitting is not where you start, it's where you finish. And ideally, as uh, any young hitter, you know, your kids in Little League, uh, high school, or even here at the Major League level, you want to make sure that your hips are lined up towards the pitcher. You see it right there with Starling Castro. He got close. Segura will get him on the broken bat roller. And Starling Castro right here. This is the side look. He starts with an open stance. He's got the bit of a leg kick and he wants to get back to square. You see that front foot hitting and that's where he's talking about has a little bit of trouble getting back to completely straight. Both feet looking back at the mound. So he is a little bit open right there and I think those are the leaky hip, leaky hips he's talking about. But I'll tell you what he certainly stayed on that first double in the gap to right this sure first time did. up. Almost hit it out of here. Yep. Sure holds a strike. But a lot of times, Lynn, you can see sometimes guys will cheat to the game plan. You line a double to, to right center field. You really stay on the ball. You think Matt Garza, 93, 94, he's probably coming inside my next at bat. So you know, sometimes you're more inclined to cheat a little bit on that inside pitch. Kick and the 1-1. One, one. That's a really good curveball. 1-2. and two. Yeah, Matt Garza is certainly settling in now. Able to throw that in the... For hitters, all hitters, not just Nate Shearholz, some of the toughest pitches to hit. When you're able to throw a breaking pitch out over the plate that triggers the, the senses of the hitter that go off, that this is in my zone and I can handle it, and then get the ball to the bottom of the zone, you know you're starting to get locked in. It's a good pitch by Matt Garza right there. So far this year coming into this start he basically would throw three sliders for every curveball but we've seen number two. A bit more often. The ball lifted into shallow right and Jeanette looked back at Braun and said I'll take it. 
And it's the first one, two, three for the right-hander, Matt Garza. Cubs lead three nothing after three. provides fans with the most unique behind-the-scenes VIP game experiences available. Each package includes great tickets, first-class hotel accommodations, a special Cubs gift bag, a tour of the ballpark, and a private meet-and-greet with a current Cub. For more information, go to Cubs.com. Always great to see families here at the ballpark. As we mentioned, a nice Saturday afternoon crowd. The Cubs have a three zip lead as Edwin Jackson, who has struck out six already, faces Jonathan Lucroy. Two hits for Milwaukee, Braun and Lucroy in the first. There's Jackson's curveball, it misses low, ball one. A real opportunity Edwin Jackson's last inning out there. That's what you hone in on that bat against Ryan Braun. We talked about uh, the success that Ryan Braun's had the numbers he's put up the base hit leading into that last at bat but with two outs you want to go after him. Why you want to split these two guys up. You get Braun as the last out of the last inning. You got Jonathan Lucroy their other hot hitter the other big bat in the lineup leading off this inning just the way you want it. It's been deadly on the road. Yasiel well, Puig is hot. He has a 15 game hitting streak, and there's a base hit. Lucroy's two for two. And for the first time today, they have the leadoff man on base. Now, Mark Reynolds. <laughs> Lyle Overbay and Mark Reynolds were both non roster invitees. They made the club. They had all kinds of issues last year at first base. They had to play a lot of guys out of position just to piece it together at first. Good clubhouse guys, veterans who've been around for a while. Guys that understand their roles. Not going to get the opportunity to play every day. You, you may have a big game, doesn't mean you're going to play the next day. You got to understand that role. You've got to fill it. Got to be good clubhouse guys. Keep the team loose when you're going through the losing streaks. Real easy when you're going through the winning streaks, but key components to, to a good clubhouse. Strike called, one and one. There it is. 
Ruiz. Great swing. One and two. The story of Edwin Jackson's been told a lot. Drafted as an outfielder by the LA Dodgers. Big arm, 95, 96 miles an hour. And so much of the conversation, even this year, and again, a lot of the injury conversation about velocity and what you've seen. Edwin Jackson had what the Dodgers were looking for. And he's been very durable at yes. this point. Made his major league debut on his 20th birthday back in 03, and he beat Randy Johnson. Well, that's pretty amazing when you add up all the details there, going from an outfielder to a pitcher, and I mean, understanding your trade and then climbing the ranks as quickly as he did. He hit 98 on the gun in that debut. Threw a no hitter in 2010 with the Diamondbacks. His one two and he gets Reynolds on the half swing. Second time he's struck out Reynolds. And that's the first out of the inning. Gets back to that slider. You think back to his first at bat, that's exactly where he went four times in a row. Try to get Reynolds. Didn't get him that first at bat, but does there. Had set him up with the fastball and went back to the slider low and away. Lucroy still at first now Segura. Who's got him in the Zach Grinky deal with the Angels. Well the real key to that trade is that Zach Grinky is no longer with the Angels and I think that a lot of people saw the great start to Segura's season last year the great uh, year that he put together and. Uh, I feel like that might be one of the more lopsided trades uh, in recent memory. Yeah, those rental players, and certainly Garza would, would fit into that category last year. It's not as if they never work out. Uh, if the team that trades the prospects to get the veteran goes on to win the World Series, nobody complains. No, it's kind of the fallout of it though it's it's the fact that Segura becomes your everyday answer yep. at shortstop uh, whether Mike Holt becomes what the Cubs hope at third base or Neil Ramirez but that's exactly what you're looking for you're trying to prey on a team's desire to win that World Series there they're close they're knocking on the door they need what you have and again at the time Matt Garza was the hottest pitcher in baseball well the Brewers went out and got CC Sabathia what an 08 and was Great for them as they made the playoffs. Adam from Cleveland. And the 1 0 is high. Uh, he won a World Series ring uh, in part because of Uget Urbina, who was acquired from Texas by the Marlins for a guy named Adrian Gonzalez. Right. That's how so it works. Gave up part of their future. To add a big piece to their bullpen in 2003 in Florida. That is so interesting in today's game how we talk about winning the World Series and what it takes to winning the World Series and how organizations are they willing to go the extra mile to make it happen? Swing and a miss. Fastball County got a slider and it's two and one. Now yeah, that's how good that slider's been today. Edwin Jackson leaning on it in hitters counts. You can see it right there in the strike zone. Out of the strike zone, ideal. That's exactly what you want. Hitter picks it up in the zone, wants the swings, thinking aggressive on a 2 0 pitch right there. Ball ends up at his shoe tops. Pretty good lead over there by Lucroy. And Segura late. 93 it's two and two. Schaefer on deck. Interesting choice here. 
Clearly Segura was tardy on that fastball so they could go back to the slider. As you're thinking Segura is probably going to speed up his bat but he couldn't catch up to the 2 1. Right. And they go with 95 with a lot of sink. That was a nasty pitch. <laughs> and that was an emergency hack right there by Segura. Just reaching out and getting a piece, put this thing, oof. Oh, that's not a good feeling, Len. That's a little bit of, that's where the panic starts to take over a little bit. Lost his back foot on that swing, just trying to hang in there. Still two and two. Team with three hits, but the Cubs have all the runs. Got him in the first inning. Let's see, these are where some of the subtle messages can be sent, Len. You know, Edwin steps off right there, then he throws over to first to say, Well, that's Jonathan Lucroy. Well, maybe he wants to go to the slider right here, and that's what he's telling you. That's why he's trying to get you to shorten up over there at first base. Foul. Got the fastball in. Count holding it to a piece. The battle going on right now. Edwin did a nice job setting him up for that pitch. When fastball in, tried to get that slider away. Segura did a nice job fighting it off. Had a couple lengthy at bats yesterday that would give Brewers fans the sense that he's coming out of his uh, early season funk. Ooh, that one got away. Not much Castillo could do about it. Bounced way out in front of the plate. The wild one on Jackson. Well, that's a slider. He overthrew it. Just did. Held on to it too long. When you bounce it out in front of the plate like that, that's just too much action. Tried to really force it away. Full count on Segura with Schaefer on deck. As long at bat continues. Swing and a miss for strike three. Eight punch outs. Edwin Jackson had to work for it, but he finally got it there. There's that slider. You can see the dot, the cement mixer right there. Segura, conscious of the fastball inside, pulls off it just a little bit. Gets his eighth strike out of the afternoon. Brings up Schaefer with two gone.
Pound back our way. It's 0 and 2. Nice pitch right there again by Edwin Jackson. Two fastballs back to back. First one low, strike, bottom of the zone. Second one up. Changed his eyesight, changed his eye level. Edwin's in a good spot right now, executing his pitches very well. Put him away here. Kick the pitch. Popped him up. Who wants it? It'll be Rizzo's. Jackson vacated at <laughs> the last possible second. To end the inning, it's still three zip Cubs. the ballpark today just got a great hand serving as a recruiter with the Chicago recruiting battalion 14 years of service deployed once to Iraq twice to Afghanistan in support of operations Iraqi freedom and enduring freedom all right this is the pop up the ends the inning here Anthony Rizzo is ultimately going to take control of this and call it off Edwin Get out of the way, man. <laughs> Infielders want to get out of there. They don't want any part of that. So still three nothing. Cars are settling in after a three run first. Has retired six in a row as he faces his former catcher who got him for a two run double in the opening inning. Well, he should have, right? He knows it. That's been the theme today, yeah. <laughs> He'll be followed by Alt and Barney here in the Cubs' fourth. On the outside corner for strike one. Here it comes. And on his hands that time. And the ball and a strike. Seen that pitch a few times in his life. Three and one. 
Rare road win for the Marlins last night in San Francisco. Former Cub Casey McGee knocked in the winning run in the ninth, seven to five, the final. Out back, Lucroy will not have a play. Casey off to a great start. Five and 16 on the road, 17 and five at home. Well, you see young teams do this at times. It's usually the first place you figure it out is at home. Giants leading the West by three. Over the Rockies starting play today. The Rockies with a 3 1 win over the Padres called a strike three. To get Castillo, Jorge De La Rosa, and a no hitter into the seventh last night. Strikeout number three for Garza, and here's Olt. Both guys really starting to settle in now, mix, make pitches, execute pitches. Living on the corners. Four homers on the recently completed road trip for Mike. And he's been rather Mark Reynolds like this year. Well, I, I think in part, Len, it's. This generation of player, I really do. I mean, when I came up in the 90s, the early 90s, I mean, a lot of conversation in the minor leagues about putting the ball in play with two strikes, understanding, you know, what's expected of you, not striking out. I mean, you almost took it personal uh, when a guy would punch you out. I don't think this generation, and again, it's just different, sees it that way. They're more inclined to let it go, work for the mistake, maintain that, you know, that strong, sometimes big swing at times. You know, Hope that that cookie comes, and if you can get him to make a mistake, make him pay. Still thinking maybe a little bit more long ball. My generation, a lot of guys choked up, got a little closer to the plate, shortened up the swing. There you go, right there. Holt did not shorten up and strikes out for the second time. Back to back K's for Garza. Yeah, this is kind of what I'm talking about fans. I mean when you get to two strikes and you're in a position to defend I mean if you're going to maintain a big strong powerful swing I mean you're going to get overmatched at times on pitches inside and you see it right there Mike old beat by the fastball on the inside part of the plate. It's going to happen. But again uh, I mean this is where conversation and talk and young players have to figure out who they're going to be at the major league level. They've got to decide for themselves over the last week. I've really picked up on junior lake. Doing such a better job with two strikes, shortening up. I think the sack fly in the St. Louis series uh, there in, in, in one of the ball games, 94 miles an hour away. I've seen Junior pull off that ball an awful lot. Did a great job, shortened up his swing, just stayed short to the ball and got the sacrifice fly. But these are some of the adjustments that we talk with young teams in, in how this offense is going to get better moving forward. What you would hope to see. So Barney with 15 of his 18 career homers coming. In this ballpark, he chokes up a little bit with two mm -hmm. strikes. And bounces to third. The Yankee will fire to Reynolds, and that's it. Barnes has been good here lately after the three run first.
presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. Todd will have the full breakdown on today's game along with all the action from around the league. Don't miss Cubs post game live. Kelly and Holly today right after the game on Comcast Sportsnet. Here's your Xfinity high speed action. We're going to lock in on Mr. Jackson. Some nasty fastballs at the top of the strike zone right there. We're going to start to see this slider settle in. And his shoulders kind of che cheating. He's been good. Eight strikeouts through four as he gets set for his fifth inning of work. Bianchi, Garza, and Herrera do up. We don't know if late in the ball game uh, Carlos Gomez is available to pinch hit. Dealing with that lower back tightness, he was scratched from the lineup about an hour before game time. And a strike called on the bender. Well, I think it's in his best interest to take the afternoon off. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> The 01 is high. He certainly turned himself into a game changer. The Milwaukee Brewers and one of the big reasons why they're off and running this year. One and two. Later this afternoon, the Nationals will look for their 10th straight win against the Mets after beating them 5 2 last night. Bartolo Colon for the Mets, Gio Gonzalez for the Mets, called strike three. Give him nine on the day. And when Jackson again dialed in, started this at bat off with a slow curveball, ends it with a fastball away. I mean, it, I'm telling you, you start playing with the psyche of the hitter if you can throw that first pitch slow one over the plate because, again, you, you, you just you want to set your timing up to the fastball and you get it late. That 93 looks like 97. He has tied his season high with the nine strikeouts. Garza bunts back to Jackson and is thrown out. Two quick outs. Matt, tired of everybody bunting on him, tried to bunt on Edwin. <laughs> Two quick outs, it's Herrera. Pirates and Yankees were rained out last night. They'll play a straight up double header tomorrow. Edinson Volquez, David Phelps, scheduled pitchers here in about 10 minutes in the Bronx. Check swing, grounder foul. Two things on the Pirates, Len. If I told you they were nine games back, would you be surprised? Yeah, I am. I'm really surprised they've gotten off to such a slow start. You mentioned the Marlins. They tied with the Pirates for fewest road wins. Reds are two games under. Cardinals two over within five of the Brewers. Still early, about 40, 42 games in for most teams. Yeah, quarter pole. Milwaukee last year went six and 22 in the month of May, just a killer. They already have seven May wins this season. You can have a bad week or two, but a, a six and twenty-two month will usually uh, Ooh. kill your year. Swing and a miss. He's hit double digits today. Ten strikeouts and in five innings of work. Three nothing Cubs.
Presented by Jewel Osco, the official kids club of the Chicago Cubs. Team up with Clark as a member of Clark's crew and get kids specific perks, experiences and merchandise. Go to Cubs.com slash Clark to sign up today and be part of the fun all season long. Jackson leading three nothing will lead off the fifth and he chops one foul past third. Ten strikeouts for the eighth time in his career. He's three off his all time high of 13 set back in 2011. Oh and two. Edwin Jackson has looked as from my eyes as good as any game I've seen from him this year. He is locked in today. We'll get him locked in on him at the plate. Foul tip strike three. Well we're trying to keep you young Todd Hollinsworth one of your former Cub teammates is still <laughs> pitching. That's Kyle Farnsworth 38 years old. He debuted in 99 with the Cubs and a pretty good career for a 47th round draft pick picked up today by the Houston Astros. Now well, Kyle's still getting it up there with good velocity. Very interesting. Uh, I believe it was the same series. But he just picked up a save in the Met series in the subway series and uh, I think it was a day later uh, they released him. Disney. White Sox are playing the Astros right now. Yeah, it's 16 years in the big leagues for Kyle Farnsworth, drafted in the 47th round in 1994 by the Cubs. Still throwing pretty hard. 92, 93. I think I saw 94 the other night. Right back to Garza. Two down in the inning. Two outs, it's Coglin. Sack bunt and a ground out. Have hit one ball into the outfield since the Castillo double in the first inning. Well, then there was something I had picked up on in yesterday's ball game with Kyle Loesch, and I'm thinking Matt Garza is doing a bit of the same thing. Breaking balls early, right? Breaking balls early in the count. Yeah, we've seen it. Cubs struggling with that. That is his third straight one-two-three frame. Three nothing, Cubs.
of the game. Vote now. Long on to Cubs. In game live on CSNChicago.com. Brought to you by Comcast Business Class. And a fun one today as the Cubs lead 3 0. And as Todd mentioned, uh, Jackson, as good as we've seen him, not only this year, but in his two years with the club. Ten strikeouts and counting. Tough part of the order here. Jeanette Braun Lucroy. Two, three, four. You generally think with Edwin, you start breaking down his starts, uh, how he navigates the traffic just a little bit. Typically some runners on base. Can he make some big pitches in big spots? Edwin's been a step better today. There hasn't been a whole lot of traffic at all. Honestly, he's been in command from pitch number one. It's given up three hits. They've all been singles, so he's limited the slugging percentage. And yeah, when he strikes out as many as he has today, you see in his career, he's been lights out. Let's go with that. Rolled foul. Got a good question on Twitter from Jonathan Parker. Said he was curious what the difference between an old school 12 to 6 curve and a slurve would be. That's a good question. Well, it really is. When you talk about it, it's the idea that when you see it out of the hand, it's over the top. Uh, 12 o'clock being at the top, 6 o'clock being at the bottom. When you see it out of the hand, the hitter sees it the same way. It's a pitch that is going to change your eye level. So the ult to make the catch. Yeah, so we'll slur the uh, breaking ball as we get near the slider a little tighter. Right, certainly a little, a little bit tighter. You talk a little bit more vertical and horizontal at the same time. The the other one, you know, typically it's in the it's in its lane. It stays in the lane that you're just talking vertical. Where is it going to get to? Does it get to the bottom of the strike zone or is it a ball in the dirt? The slur, you actually have to consider not only the break, but as it as it comes in on you. Me being a left-handed hitter, you know, is that pitch going to be too far inside? The action seems to be getting louder every time Braun comes to the dish. Single and a strikeout. Swings away and fouls off to the right. Chicago native, uh, pro wrestler CM Punk will handle the stretch in the seventh. Commemorating the heavyweight wrestling title match at Wrigley Field in 1934. Jim Landos pinned Ed Lewis to win the title. They built a ring above home plate in 1934. I don't believe Mr. Punk was here for that one. <laughs> I think you're right. So it was 80 years ago. Let's see if I can't get Mr. Punk to put me in a sleeper hold. <laughs> I don't know if you want to. <laughs> That's one of his signature moves, I believe. The GTS, the, the go to sleep. Right. Fastball low, two and one. Cubs playing Braun straight up on the infield and the outfield. Two and two. Started with a west wind. Now it's really out of the south, kind of blowing out toward left. Ground ball, Jackson will field, and underhand to Rizzo. Two down. Real nice play by Edwin Jackson here. We talk about fielding your position, getting yourself into position to field the ball, but not only that, react to the ball. Ball's not right back at him. He's got to go get it. Does a nice job. Leads him to first. A little short flip to Anthony Rizzo for the out. It's a big part of the lineup for Jackson right here, the middle. Lucroy has two of their three hits. Mm -hmm. Both singles to left. Two thirds of the way through this line, or two thirds of the way through the uh, to through the inning here, 
Yeah, big part of the lineup. They're in the seventh in St. Louis, 3 1 Cardinals over the Braves. Andrelton Simmons is three for three for the visitors. Darren Harang with six, gave up three, two were earned. Shelby Miller, one unearned run through seven for the Cardinals. That's low, two and one. Three and one. And when Jackson fallen by behind three and one, Jonathan Lucor still wants to stay aggressive here. Yes, this is their number four hitter, but he is pitching with a three to nothing lead. It's the sixth inning. He got a couple outs. And stay away from the free passes. Look for him to be aggressive right here. And a home run threat on deck and Reynolds. Well, you don't want to go building any innings with free passes. Popped up. Looks like Rizzo will have room over near the tarp. Maybe not. Yes, he's got it. Got over there quickly, made the play, and the inning is over. Bottom six, Cubs three, Brewers nothing. Competition, host your best customers and guests in a private suite at Wrigley Field. The new Veen Investment Suites can accommodate anywhere from 15 to 55 guests and include food, all you can drink beverages, and parking. Book your premier experience at the ballpark. Visit Cubs.com slash suites. Anthony Rizzo with a nice grab and foul territory to end the top of this inning, and he'll bat to lead off the bottom of the sixth. RBI double by Castro in the first two run double by Castillo two batters later all the runs to this point. Oh and one. A lot of early action on both sides but both pitchers able to get into a pretty good rhythm here start executing pitches and. Put some of the hitters down quickly. So way out front oh and two.
Garza born in Selma, California, went to Fresno State. 30 years old. MVP of the American League Championship Series with the Rays in 08. Youngest pitcher at the time to win the ALCS MVP. 2 0 in that series against Boston. Well, you see the stuff. Nobody doubts it around baseball. Cubs certainly didn't as well. Just that rhythm. I mean, really, when you when you get down to it, you think about Matty. You think maybe a little injury. Certainly, that's been the, some of the conversation towards the end here in Chicago. But the ability to get into that rhythm. And a line drive base hit for Rizzo with two strikes. Real nice piece of hitting from Anthony Rizzo right here gets the fastball up at the top of the zone keeps his hands inside the baseball that's the key we talk about situational hitting two strike hitting earlier in the broadcast this is the one adjustment Anthony has really made very well stays inside the baseball right there with two strikes let's the ball get a little bit deeper gets himself a little base hit out the left here's Castro average at 299. Pitch buried in the dirt, one and one. Like Jackson, Garza has a no hitter on his resume as a Tampa Bay Ray in 2010 against Detroit. Inside two and one. You know, one of the advantages you think of Sterling Castro in the four hole and really caught most of us by surprise the willingness for Ricky Renneria to go there and move him into that spot in the lineup. But I mean, to me, Sterling Castro, you can't pitch him the same way twice. You could actually use that as a weapon if he's a hot hitter in the four spot in the lineup. Well, it used to be the Cubs didn't have a bona fide leadoff hitter, so they had moving parts. Mm -hmm. Certain guys would try it. David DeJesus did it for a while while he was here. They've got that guy for now, and Bonifacio. Uh, they don't really have a a cleanup guy, a guy you just say, well, that's a four hitter. So, it, especially with the roster construction right now. With an extra arm in the bullpen, generally Castro's been between two left handed hitters, and the four spot just made sense. Behind Rizzo and today ahead of Sherholtz. In the dirt, three and two. Well, it makes him that RBI threat, though. What we've seen from Starlin is the ability to lay off that slider away. When Starlin's in a good spot, we talk about, you know, he wants to swing the bat. I know that this isn't an on base conversation. It's what can I get my hands on that's a hittable pitch conversation and in the fourth spot in the lineup. It typically is a spot as you said he's sandwiched around two lefties. You're going to go at him. Matt Garza right handed. Be careful. You better not pitch him the same way twice. He may get you. See if Rizzo's on the move. Nobody out. There he goes. And he'll stay out of the double play. And Segura gets the out at first. Rizzo into scoring position for Nate Sheerholt. A couple of cracks added here with a runner at second.
Rizzo with a look at Rizzo. Here's the pitch. Backdoor curve, strike one. Oh, and two. Well, he found a lot. Nate struggled here in the early part of the season. A lot of pitchers have stayed aggressive against him away, really challenging his patience. Loves to pull the baseball, can pull the ball for power. Most pitchers wanting to stay away from that power have lived out there on the outside corner. And he got him. Sherholt strikes out six for Garza. Catcher number five, Rosen, Good look at the tight spin on that slider from Garza. It's Castile. Head on a curve. That's not wasting any time against Gio Gonzalez, leading three nothing in the top of the first in D.C. and still batting. And they're tired of that Nats dominance. Eric Campbell is knocked in two. So uh, they batted around. Bartolo Colon got in at bat. And it flied out to end the top of the first. Four even pitches. Foul back one and one. You know, that pattern has really stayed true today. Matt Garza, much like Loesch did yesterday, lots of soft, early, hard, late, trying to turn that 92 into 94 and getting it by some hitters. Work so far this afternoon. Yeah, I don't think uh, we saw Matt throw this many curveballs in any of his starts as Never. a cup. Never. Neil Ramirez up along with James Russell in the home bullpen. Inside. Now, two power pitchers today, and they've had success with their off speed, Jackson and Garza. Well, that's the advantage. If you can get to it, the question is, can you throw it for strikes? Both have been able to do that this afternoon. Three and one. Back on it, and he's going to have room right at the edge of the track to end the inning. Six in the books, Cubs three, Milwaukee still nothing.
CM Punk, but uh, the off-air conversation has been really interesting. Uh, Todd Hollinsworth asked if uh, you could put him to sleep, and uh, the answer was a very quick yes. Yes. For, I mean, for, for a fee. For a fee. And we were up to 100, I think maybe 125, but I, I, don't, I don't work cheap. <laughs> I, I just wanted to actually. Know I don't. I don't work at all lately. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to know the legitimacy of the sleeper hold. No, I mean, legit. As, a, as a kid growing up, I saw the sleeper hold and thought that was the coolest move ever. Yeah. Could was, I? Could I actually make that happen and put somebody to sleep? It, yeah, you've showed your age though, because now <laughs> the kids like to call it the rear naked choke. Oh it's, my. It's, you know, I like sleeper though. It's it's. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's much more of a relaxing a sleeper. Mark Reynolds takes a strike. Oh, that was a classic move. The straight edge superstar. And uh, great to have you back here. How many times now is this uh, doing the stretch? Oh, man. Um, three, I yeah. think. Three. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to act like it's completely blasé. It's old hat for me now. I just, you know, <laughs> this isn't exciting at all. I, oh, hi. Fly ball. Out of play. All right, so we're here uh, commemorating the... Heavyweight wrestling title match in 1934. What do you know about it? Uh, well, Wrigley. I knew I knew Ed the Strangler Lewis very very well. He was uh, he was a cheap man, very very frugal, but uh, but tough. Yeah, I mean uh, you probably don't want to know much about him personally. Like you know, yeah, you don't you don't you just want to know about him the wrestler. And he was good. He was he was good. Who was his opponent that night? Uh, let's see. Jim Landos pinned Ed Lewis to win the title 80 yeah. years ago. Yeah, that Landos. He's, I don't know. I don't know about him. Yeah, they, it says they had a ring built above home plate. I think we need to bring wrestling back here to Wrigley Field, I agree. don't you? I think it would do very well. Let's wait till it warms up, maybe August 7th or something. Yes. <laughs> I'm in. Let's do it. <laughs> I love it. What is the temperature normally uh, inside a... Uh, a wrestling ring it, it looks rather hot well it depends you know i've wrestled in uh, in barns where it's it's been very very hot uh, i've wrestled outside in stadiums in front of excess of 80,000 people where it's been freezing cold you know april in new york in uh, Met metlife stadium not mm -hmm. not a not a good time <laughs> there's a 2-2 two, two in reynolds way out in front I mean, we talk about the fans and how they fit into different sports and endeavors and arenas. Mm -hmm. I think of wrestling that that that's what it's all about, isn't it? Really the, getting the, the fans, fans involved. Yeah, yeah I mean it, it, it's 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 no fun when you're uh, you're you're at work and you're the, the, the people are sitting on their hands. But that uh, that's ultimately up to you, you know, and engaging with the fans and that's some of the some of the best times I, I've ever had. Getting him to, you know, swear at me, yell at me. Sometimes, sometimes in Mexico, if you're really good, they throw change at you. Well, that's is, right. And so you said that's really good. You know, we were having some conversation early in the, you know, we were talking about Ryan Braun and the fan reaction. Oh, Ryan yeah, Braun yeah, yeah. being back. And I said, well, here's yeah. the thing. If you're really good and you're in somebody else's park, you want to get booed. Yeah. You're doing your job. Yeah, but I mean, he's, I don't think he's booed based on well, you if know he's what, good you know or what bad mean. at baseball. I think he's being <laughs> booed because he's, he's a schmuck, but, you know. Jackson just hit 100 pitches on the day. One strike on Segura. He's doing good, Jackson. Really good day today. Ten strikeouts so far. Well, the thing I'm sure that fans have learned about you, as uh, much fun as you have with them, even if they boo you, that you've probably had some people come up to you and they're not quite sure how you're going to be, and then they're like, wow, he's a really nice guy outside the ring. Yeah, you'd be surprised. You know, you'd be surprised what a nice smile and a, you know, a handshake will do. The 0-2 hit hard into right for a base hit. So what do you have going this summer? What's going on with CM Punk? Um, I've been playing a lot of hockey, you know. Playing a lot of hockey. Playing a lot of hockey, okay. and like like Sega Genesis, NHL '94, oh, gotcha. you know. <laughs> and that's going well for you. I got a mean wraparound. Yeah, it's going great actually. It's going uh, it's going really well. I mean, I've won the Stanley Cup like 18 times now, <laughs> so that's good. Um, the, and 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 the Blackhawks are doing really really good. Oh wait. 
Skipper's out. Well, I think we're going to have a potential pitching change here. What do you Maybe think? Not as, what do you think he's saying right now? I think he's saying, "Don't take me out." He said, "Okay." What possibly could have been said in that well, Todd, uh, huddle on you, the mound? You've been on the Todd, mound in that what, spot. Well, there's, there, there's, there's some, now they're laughing, and you know. So what, what's going well, on? Well, there's right some there? pacing to this. I mean, he may go out there and tell Edwin Jackson, "This is your last hitter, no matter what. Uh, mm -hmm. You know where you're at. You're at 102 pitches right now. You've got a runner on. You've had a great start." Wants to see how he feels. There's a lot of messages that really are delivered in that, but he's probably telling him, "You're close to the end of your leash." Let's not let this thing get away. We're going to be aggressive here and attack this hitter and see if we can't get a double play ball. Okay, that's very uh, that was a very professional answer. I was looking more for, you know, hey, listen, I'm in, this is the last time I'm going to ask you. You took that, this is you, you took that really ugly girl home from the bar last night, right? Just say yes or no right now, and then I'll leave you alone. And then you know he probably is like, yeah, fine, coach, I did. And then he's like, okay, and he just goes back. Pop up and that's out of play. Out of play. Now, why didn't you catch that? And now they fight over well, it. Now, there's three grown men rolling around in the concrete. <laughs> the wrestling. That's, that's, <laughs> I mean, I, I've known a lot of guys, and that's what it looks like, but uh, a real shame. Should have had that one. <laughs> Third man in the booth. I'm, I'm kind of feeling it right now. I, I never can develop a rhythm with you, Len, because I'm, I'm only here for like, you know, half an inning. I really feel we'd knock it out of the park if I uh, if I got to sit in on a, a full game. You you might wind up throwing me out of the booth, but <laughs> no, I don't think I could. You know, I might let you. Here's the 0-1. Another foul. Out of play. <laughs> See if they get this one. Nope. Now's a good time to let the fans at Wrigley Field know that they can bring mitts and gloves to the ballpark if you need help <laughs> catching a fall ball. Uh, you can. We had one in the booth uh, about two weeks ago. Really? Did you yeah. get? Did you, no, you caught it right? It Come on! Right in the line, <laughs> line of me. Did what? you go for it? Well, I just put my Tried hand up and it, it hit me in the worst spot possible. You don't get many up here. I'm surprised you don't have a net. You know, Harry used to. Yeah. Harry would have caught it. He would have caught it in his beer. Not flinched. <laughs> Here's the 02. The foul. Where would Harry sit? Would he be with where are you sitting? Basically where, where you and I are sitting, yeah. That's, that's, that's his spot. That blows my mind still to this day. That's crazy that I'm sitting where, where Harry Carey would sit. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have been in this booth. A lot of a lot of cool people. Bill Murray. Bill's been here many times. Yeah. Shout out, shout out to Bill. And you're a regular now. You're you're part of the inner circle. Oh wow, oh, absolutely. The circle third of trust. Time, third time. Hey, if you come here more than once, yep. you're in. I am. I'm flattered. I'm always asked back. It's always my my worst fear. One and two. Uh, the 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 inside word and. Uh, you met Todd here today. And yes. We were describing uh, you uh, was charming. Oh wow! Really? Yes. No. Well, guys, I'm I am getting married next month, so oh, I'm sorry. Congratulations! I'm sorry. Congrats. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. She's, That's great. She's right up there, actually. You see her? There she is. Hi, honey. <laughs> She's the best. Well, I certainly hope so. Oh, she is. Trust me. You should see the rock on her hand too. Man, what a ring. It's the greatest. She's going to beat me to death later. I think they just put her on TV. I'm going to get destroyed. <laughs> two and two to Schaefer. She called the shot. Oh, women, am I right? Come yeah. on. I mean, you got a ring on your oh, finger? Yeah, yeah you know. Never believe you it. know what's up. A you beautiful know. wife and four kids. Awesome. She's the boss. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She was working the scoreboard earlier. It was pretty rad. They will get the out at first. Good play by Castro. They didn't even think about Segura. Todd, we've had this come up a few times earlier this year. Knowing the game situation, right? It's a three-run game. Get an out. Well, I, I, in understanding the situation, that you've got a pretty quick runner at first base right there. You got a slow roller to shortstop. Your play, 100% of the time, is the first base right there. Don't even think twice about it. 
you got a lead. You're, you're, you're playing for outs right now. And for Edwin Jackson, that's exactly what he's looking for. They get the out of first base. And he'll get the Yankee here. 108 pitches. This is probably the end of the road for the starter. Garza is going to come out on deck, but there's no chance he'll hit if the inning continues. That spot would represent the tying run. I'm not used to, uh, and I know there's still a lot of baseball left, but I'm not used to us uh, bidding farewell to our pitchers and them coming back and us beating them. It's normally the other way around. Well, that's the other thing. You have a lead late. You got to hold it. Yeah. One strike to Bianchi. Segura at second. Each team with four hits. All the Brewer hits have been singles today. And a strike. It's 0 and 2. You know, you think about Edwin Jackson and some of the leash that you're getting from uh, Ricky Renneria here in this in this start today. It was only about three or four starts ago. Edwin Jackson dialed in, throwing pretty well. He was at 84, 85 pitches. Went out. And, and got him didn't allow him to venture into this part of the ball game and I think Edwin's earned this spot now he's up at 110 pitches he went out he talked to him halfway through the inning and said listen you've earned it you're here finish this inning off for us strike away there is a slider one and two The adrenaline's starting to hit me. <laughs> See, we're supposed to distract you by talking to you beforehand. It's going to be fine. It'll be over in about 29 seconds once it starts. <laughs> Just take it slow. You're going to be great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I kind of want to go down in sports infamy and do something horrendously <laughs> awesome. That no, we don't want to do on the But news. you want to come back. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true, too. <laughs> that's a good one, Len. But I have done it three times, too, so... Who knows what's going to happen? Foul ball. Didn't mean to step on your commentary yeah, there, Len. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. I am enjoying all the festivities for the 100 year birthday of Ricky Field. It's pretty Gre cool. Yeah, the green marquee out front for yeah. this uh, homestand back in 1934. It was painted green. Green and gold, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Right. Yeah. It's in the gold trim. Good block by Castillo. Two and two. Edwin Jackson trying to go down there with the slider again. We've seen it all afternoon. See if he can get that swing in the miss. Taking his time here, knowing that this is probably it. You might see him go there one more time. That's a sign. And here it is. Oh. Mm. What's the longest at bat you've ever seen? Oh, longest at bat I have ever seen. Uh, was Alex Cora, were you a teammate? The Matt Clement at bat? It was at Dodger Stadium. It was like 18, 19 pitches. It I don't like think. Old, round 04. I remember that. That's correct. Yeah. Oh, why don't I, I, I don't know if I was there for some reason. I, I was going to say my first response was, would have been Steve Traxel was somehow involved. <laughs> Two minutes between pitches. Well, right. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you're right. I do remember that at Pat. I can't remember if I was there. I, maybe I wasn't because I don't remember it. It's about an innings worth of pitches to one right. guy. I believe it ended in a homer, didn't it? I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. Well, at least it wasn't anticlimactic. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Here hey. we go. Stretch time. Today's guest conductor for taking out to the ball game. Pro wrestling.
wrestler CM Punk. All right, Chicago, before we send these guys back to Milwaukee, I got to give a shout out to the Chicago Blackhawks. Taking on the Kings tomorrow. We're going to crush them. We're going to bring the cup back home. All right, let me hear you. A one, a two, a three. Hundred collection from game used throwback jerseys and Wrigley Field 100 baseballs to autographed items from your favorite alumni and Hall of Famers. Cubs Authentics has the most exclusive memorabilia to commemorate 100 years of Wrigley Field. Visit cubscom authentics So Garza gets another inning as his spot will lead off the top of the eighth. Edwin Jackson with his 11th strikeout to get out of that uh, top of the seventh. Great job by CM Punk. Ball one to Mike Olt. Congratulations to him on his upcoming marriage. Absolutely. The wedding day. Two and oh. Garza may play the what if game if this score doesn't turn around. But one bad inning, that was the first. His Alt skies one foul out of play. He almost got himself out of it. Yeah, all the runs were with two outs in that first inning. That's veteran lefty Zach Duke. And I, I agree with you. You uh, alluded to Jackson. I think this might be the best start we've seen from him in a Cub uniform. Well, the results are easy to speak of. I mean, you look at him so far in the ballgame 115 pitches, 11 strikeouts, seven innings, one walk, no one runs. I just really like to speak to the confidence. I mean, that's an Edwin Jackson that uh, was out there executing pitches that was okay. That's Lou Croy for the out. He was okay with all the circumstances in the game that came his way. He managed the game so well today. Think about that 11 strikeouts, 115 pitches, just solid, solid out. <laughs> 
adding and subtracting didn't didn't lose a pitch for a period of time didn't get himself where you know he was rattled or too concerned with runners on first or second or whatever the case may be he just was aggressive and stayed that way start to finish only three Brewer runners were in scoring position against him first fourth in the seventh that was it so we'll see Neil Ramirez in the eighth He's cranking it up in the home bullpen. Lifted foul by Barney into the upper deck. Strike called one and two. Turning into a could be a great late afternoon for a, a spring barbecue. Sounds good. The grill to me. tonight. Yeah, no doubt about that. Well, I just need the temperatures to start rising for us. Hopefully we have a nice week next week. The Yankees coming to town. Slider in the dirt, two and two. Brian Kalish is on deck in uh, Jackson's spot. We were talking about all the shutouts in baseball last night. Six of them, six road shutouts. And so much of the, the cold weather that we've had, you know, here in the in the northwest or in 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 the Midwest, and then up here in the north and northeast, they've been whacked as well. A lot of hitters uh, struggling to get going. Garza was seven strikeouts. We uh, got a tweet from Topher Sorensen who went back, looked at the box score May 12, 2004, and uh, looked like you were on the roster, the uh, Cora Clement at bat. So there you have it. I want to say 18 or 19 pitches right. and ended in uh, in a home run. As well, I remember said. the end result. I, yeah. I don't know why I don't remember the, the process a little bit more, more vividly. Consider Ryan Kalish, ball one. It's a strike, two and one. And Kalish coming off the bench, taking down the pinch hit right here. Pinch hit opportunity, two one count. See if he gets a fastball. He does, and he fouls. Paid crowd today, thirty six thousand six hundred seventy one. Fly to left. Pretty well hit, but it'll stay in. It's Herrera with two hands on it. And that'll take us into the eighth. Garza done for the day, and after that rough first inning, he was very good.
Houston. Watch John Danks and the boys from the south side finish the series up with a W. White Sox Astros tomorrow at 1230 on Comcast Sportsnet. As promised earlier in the ball game, we have our AT&T fan photo. And it's brought to you by AT&T. Hashtag Northside fan photo on Twitter if you would like to tweet us a photo for a future broadcast. Hard throwing right hand to Neil Ramirez, another guy who came over in the Garza deal. He'll take over here in the eighth. And it will be Lyle Overbay to pinch hit for Garza. And Neil getting great results here in the early going. Eight innings, eight and a third innings, 13 strikeouts. Big arm, 94 on the fastball. You're going to see the slider and the curveball depending on what's working. Cubs trying to end the three game skid. And beat the first place Brewers. Curveball low. It's a sign from Castillo. And he hits the target one and one. Back to the top, Herrera, Jeanette. And if anybody gets on, Ryan Braun. Fastball right there from Ramirez at the top of the strike zone. A little tailing action on it right there. Oof. Late movement. Take late movement over velocity a day of the week. You see it right there on his fastball. It's over in St. Louis. Cardinals four, Braves one. Shelby Miller got his sixth win. Beat Aaron Harang. Trevor Rosenthal, a couple of strikeouts in the ninth to get his 13th save. So the Cardinals now heating up. They're three over 500. They've won four straight. Full three and two. And we talk about some of the lessons these young guys are learning coming out of the bullpen into a ball game. This is one of those spots right here. You got a three nothing lead. Don't want to walk the leadoff hitter. You want to make sure you throw a strike right here. Stay after it. Don't give anything away. Swing and a miss over the fastball, and he got him. Well, got it to a good spot. Let's take a look at it one more time. Look, the late action on that fastball is outstanding. 93 miles an hour, got that tailing action. You can kind of see it right there. Lyle Overbay, again, leading off the inning. He knows his fastball is coming here. He's banking on anything. Not able to catch up with it. Yeah, you hear a lot, you know, keep the ball down. There are times, and you saw that last pitch with the elevation, it was kind of what he wanted. Not necessarily where the catcher set up, but 
That late life, it really seemed to take off. Right, the ball tails away. It's at the top of the strike zone. I mean, you, you certainly don't want to live any higher than where he was at right there. But the point is, is you know, your sliders and your curveballs are typically, if they're well thrown, are at the bottom of the strike zone. So if they're down, you know, you can get that fastball up. You can change the eyesight of the hitter. So you'll one. Now one and one to the switch hitting Herrera. White Sox trailing at Houston 4 2. They're only in the bottom of the second there. White Sox won last night 7 to 2. Big three run homer by Adam Dunn. Mm -hmm. Up in the second deck. will go for his eighth win tonight. Blue Jays are in Arlington to play the Rangers. He's seven and one with a two zero four. We're going to start to his season. I think he could do it for another four or five years. Amazing. Off to his best start mm -hmm. since 05 when he was 10 and one with the White Sox. I how that ended. Well, he's made four starts on the road. He's won all of them with a, an 0.92 ERA. He has overthrew a little bit on that pitch. Another 3 2 count. Swing and a miss. And when he's needed it, he's used the fastball to get the strikeout. It's 13 strikeouts by Cubs pitching today. Yeah, About Dallas. the same spot, too. That's, there you go. That's it. Fantastic. Able to go up there, upper corner right there. That tailing fastball. You see the tilt on that pitch just a little bit. Gets that run away. 93 miles an hour at the top of the strike zone. It's the swing and the miss. Quiet day for Jeanette. Actually, top of the order hasn't done much at all for the Brewers. We're going to take a look at these last two pitches here from Ramirez. And he picked strikeouts up on. There's that two seamer, 93 miles an hour, 3 2 pitch. Let's see it again. Oh, different hitter. Same result. Pretty good. Herrera and Jeanette have combined to go 0 for 7 to this point. Four strikeouts. Just on a curve. Two and one. Able to wrestle away that starting position at second base from one Ricky Weeks, who had been slumping, goes back to last year. Great final two months for him. Good start to his season this year. Big reason why they're winning. Ramirez with a one, two, three, eighth inning. Still three, nothing Cubs.
Blackberry.com at bat for your iPhone, iPad, Android, Blackberry 10, or Windows Phone 8. Get scores, stats, highlights, live audio, and more. Text at bat to 31826 or visit Cubs.com for details. Two starters went seven today. Neil Ramirez with a one, two, three top of this inning. First and maybe only reliever for the Brewers. It's veteran lefty Zach Duke. His first action in well, just a couple of days. He pitched on Thursday against the Pirates. Faced two guys and retired them both. Fastball slider curveball change not overpowering about 90 miles an hour. It's going to be aggressive gets the ball on the ground. Bonifacio. Bounces foul. Top of the order here for the Cubs. As they try to tack on. Duke is 31 he's from Clifton Texas. Off the outside corner. One time starter. He's found a home in this Brewers bullpen. Came up with the Pirates. The Yankee will get Bonifacio. Junior Lake's going to hit for Chris Coughlin. Lake homered yesterday is fifth of the year. Off Kyle Loesch. That's a good piece of hitting right here. He had actually fallen behind in the count right there. Got a fastball up, a little two seamer right there. It was all over. Laser. Two iron. Well, this is. Uh one of the things that really stands out to me, we talked Ricky Renneria, we've we, we've seen you know conversation about Bolton Lake getting more playing time, being able to start every day and earning this and that. I'm telling you, you know, I mean, even these at bats right here help mold these players for down the road. It, it bats coming off the bench. I mean, these are not easy at bats, but they're learning at bats. You're going to find out what roles your players are going to be in later when you when you expose them to this. It's a nice matchup late in the golf ball game. He's been sitting on the bench for seven innings, watching, maybe keeping himself ready as, uh, as the game's moved on. But again, a lot to be learned in these at bats as well, even though he didn't get the start today. Two and two. Another pitch. Good take. It's full. Rizzo next. Hector Rondon. Right now it's a save spot of the night that would change if the Cubs add on. Payoff pitch bounced foul. Zach Duke puts that pitch in the same spot. A change up again, I think Junior Lake might make him pay for it. Ball missed in ball four. Nice at bat from Junior Lake right there, showing discipline on the three-two pitch. Zach Duke dropping down right there, trying to sneak a fastball inside after going change up away. 
see if we can't do something with Junior over there at first base and get that fourth run. There's a Ramos. Currently on the DL. Get healthier, Ramos, after you leave. In there for a strike. Happy birthday, Sharon Wold. Rooting on the Cubs today. Duke will throw over a pretty short lead by Lake. Two. Anthony done a, he's done a very nice job against left-handed pitching this year. Staying through the baseball. So you head to the uh, Milwaukee ninth. Braun Lucroy Reynolds are due. Be against Hector Rondon. Another 0 2. And a chopper back to Duke. They'll get one. They will get them both. One to six to three. Which will take us to the ninth. It will be a safe spot for Rondon. We'll be back. and shuttle services on night and weekend games. The remote parking lot is located at 3900 North Rockwell. For details, it's Cubs.com. Lake stays in and plays left after hitting for Coglin. And Hector Rondon haven't been a lot of save chances for this bullpen, but when he's been out there, he's three for three. Yeah, he's got a big arm. You see 95, 96 miles an hour. Throw a cut fastball, throw the slider. Great story. Yeah. 
Fastball at 97 but low. 6'3, 165 is what he's listed at. Packs a punch with that heater. Charged by Castro for the out. Nice job by Starlin. Big first out. Comes in, gets that hop right there. That's the one you want. Throws it all in one motion. Gets it across the diamond quickly. Jackson for seven. Ramirez a one, two, three, eight. Now Rondon. Lucroy bounces to Rizzo, a little underhand. A couple of ground outs, and it'll be Mark Reynolds with two gone. And let's keep it going. Three pitches, two outs. <laughs> well, all the action early today. Well pitched ball game from the second inning on from both sides. Yeah, shaky first obviously for Garza remember Jackson gave up two two out hits mm -hmm. before striking out the guy at the plate right now and since then it's it's been shut down city Reynolds takes a strike. Always the worst feeling. Last out of the game. <laughs> uh, it takes me back. Just feeling for him right there. You know, you've got to take a pitch to get on base. You're down three runs and more times than that. Well, the pitcher knows it too. He's going to make his best pitch. There it is. You got to let it go. Mm. Now 0 and 2. Outside, he hit 98 on that offering. Oh, wait till the summer months; you'll see triple digits from him, no doubt. We've seen Rondon grow up as a Chicago Cub here the last year plus. A little five pick last year, two and two. Trying to save it for Jackson. Did he miss it? I think he did, and the Cubs win. Cubs win. Rondon with a nice quick one, two, three, ninth. Jackson, Ramirez, and Rondon combine on a four hit shutout. That was a good ball game today, Todd Hollinsworth. Well, a lot of fun to watch. Great start. Maybe the greatest start from Edwin Jackson. Great performance from him today. 11 strikeouts. The bullpen did their thing. Cubs got some early runs against Matt Garza as he was trying to settle in. Great approach today from the offense, too. So the Cubs now set up a rubber game tomorrow. Travis Wood will pitch for them. Marco Estrada has been very good for the Brewers. And he'll take the ball for the visitors and our GMC professional grade player of the game. The tone setter today Edwin Jackson. Well Edwin boy he had it dialed in early and often again didn't run into any traffic had the two seam fastball exploding away was able to work the slider into the mix and add in subtract on that slider as well. So you saw a variety of sliders getting great results. Brewers hitters fooled all day long. Jackson with a win. Now three and three on the year. Garza takes the loss again. Rondon with the save. Great work Todd and you are not done yet. Stay tuned. For the postgame coverage here from the ballpark, the final score today Cubs three, 
Brewers nothing. We're back with you. 12.30 for our pregame coverage on Wednesday. The Yankees and Cubs from Wrigley Field. Up next, Blue Cross Blue Shield Cubs postgame live from the ballpark. Stay tuned.